Mark gets my goat. Oh, hey, folks. Rich Outfield here. Big Anglovich. And uh, let's continue. Or let's let's finish our Captain America conversation. Yeah, it's about time to put and a stop I, to I it. I shouldn't have talked about the friggin' Avengers. I didn't mean to. But, you know, the way, this is just off the cuff. Friendly conversation. I heard and that. It goes where it wants to go. Let's it's like go. that time river in uh, Must Have Own Weapons. Yeah. It flows in eddies. Yes. All right. Uh, bye. <laughs> Wait, we're not buying. You know, one thing that, uh, from Captain America that I also really, really enjoyed was the soundtrack and the music that went with that show. It was Alan Silvestri, right, that did the... I really, I really liked the score, but on top of that, I absolutely loved that song that they composed for when he's going around selling war bonds. <laughs> I think it was called The Star-Spangled Man. Oh, what I noticed in the credits was they got Alan Menken to do the freaking song. Cool stuff, man. I, I, I'm going to have to go out and get that soundtrack because I really enjoyed that one. I'd like to, to hear it again. You've always been much more of a soundtrack key guy than I have. And I did notice the music. I'd like to see it again. Uh, Alan Silvestri did Back to the Future, and so I yeah. love the guy to death. But... Uh, Still, there's nobody like John Williams. That's true. I, I can't sing that Captain America theme or hum it, you know what I mean? And when the movie was over, there, there wasn't anything yeah, like that. Yeah, they, they didn't play it quite enough for that. But the, the good thing was I noticed uh, several times where you could hear it kind of come in and swell. And you're like, oh, okay, we've got the trumpets and we've got, we've got the brass going now. This is the, the big part here. Cool. Because, yeah, it's something I've been really... Uh, looking for recently, and me and you have talked about this after we come out of each of these films this summer, just going, gosh, where is John Williams, man? We really need something for all these. We've got all these superheroes and nothing for music for any of them. When we were kids, you know, a superhero movie and you had Superman come out and it had this theme song that you remember forever and all you have to do is go do 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 do, and everybody knows that you're talking about Superman. Like five notes is all it takes. <laughs> John Williams did that with so many films where he just give them that uh, that theme that you just are blown away by, and you know nobody can hear the Star Wars song and not know what you're talking about, or hear the Indiana Jones theme song and not know what you're talking about, or even the Harry Potter song, Jurassic Park song. Although Jurassic Park's a little less well known, but uh, it's still pretty. Uh, it's pretty iconic. It, it really is, and, and you know he's getting up there in years. That was something we were talking about. He does fewer and fewer movies. Luckily, Spielberg has hit it into overdrive, and he's got three movies, you know, that are in state of completion right now. And so there's three John Williams scores we'll get to hear. But uh, one of these days he's not going to be around anymore. And well, I mean, he's already slowed down, so kind of almost isn't around anymore really i mean he's around but he's not doing nearly as much and so we've got to rely on the young bloods the new people and there are talented young composers there or are or middle-aged composers and, and and all that it's just uh there's nobody like john williams and, and i've had arguments with people you know where they like oh danny elfman or joe or jerry goldsmith or bernard herman or uh, Name somebody really, really, really awful. Oh, you can't name somebody awful because we wouldn't know who they Elon are. Eshkeri. Right. No, he's right. not He's not awful, though. I actually like that guy a lot. He did the uh, soundtrack to Stardust, and it's a good one. Oh, okay. Um, oh, uh, what's the name of the guy that used to do movies that would just do like three notes? Eh, oh, eh, Philip Glass. Philip Glass. There's a little tiny cubicle in hell reserved for that man <laughs> and so it just to me there's a void there there's a spot that needs to be filled definitely for a composer that can create themes in a movie that you remember after only seeing the movie once you walk out of the theater and you hum it and and you know maybe that takes a tremendous amount of talent and not everybody has that but i think a lot of it might also just have to do with what producers and directors want these days too uh, i don't know it, it seems like they want maybe more m mood music stuff that's giving you a mood rather than keeps coming out with you know that theme keeps coming through 
when you see your Captain America comes running, oh, here's his theme, da, 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 or whatever. <laughs> that was Star Wars, <laughs> obviously, but yeah, and, and I guess that's fine. But it just the instant shorthand emotional connection that you get from recognizing music that you've heard before. You know, the... the that They play, I think, on every single one when you see the Warner yep. Brothers logo for Harry Potter. And they played Hedwig's theme when the bird died. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's just like, even if you didn't know that that was Hedwig's theme, you know that you've heard that from when Harry was a little boy. And so right. just, oh gosh, I love that sort of stuff. And for superheroes that are big and bombastic and iconic and they've got the costume and all that stuff to have a theme that plays whenever they step out to go do their thing it just seems like a natural and to have had five x-men movies and every single one has a different yeah. composer and stuff and like that it just doesn't make any sense they had some fairly good stuff going just with the in first, the first one yeah the first Michael, one had a, michael Kamen did yeah the michael Kamen's score was pretty good to begin with and if they'd only carried it on yeah i don't know why they didn't could have been really good it, because it, that one you didn't even have like a new director or whatever to blame right it was michael yeah. singer brian it was brian, brian singer, singer again michael Kamen. yeah they had the makings the beginnings of something that could have been really good and they didn't go there unfortunately but i don't understand why it is that we don't get something like that i mean it seems like a, a no-brainer you know you pick your theme and you play it's like the pirates of the caribbean we were talking about that We were talking about, you know, what movie is there out there that you can just, you sing that theme song, you hear it, you know it, you know, really, we were thinking, gosh, the only thing we can think of is Harry Potter. And then after we were done saying that later on, you said, oh, you know, we were talking about that the other day. There's one other, that Pirates of the Caribbean stuff that is, is really memorable and stuff that you can, you can hum and stuff. And I think the reason why is because they play, you know, they've got like a little hook, a theme that they, you know, a bit of the song and they will play that again and again. And they play it dozens of times through the film. So you hear it enough times that when you go out, you really can whistle it. But it also has to be good. If you heard well, something annoying, true. but you know, like the da na na da 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 na na da da, which isn't the main pirates theme. That's like the bad guys theme, or or let's sail into adventure theme, or whatever. Da na da da na. Well, you probably know the actual name of that track <laughs> as well as the name of the composer. The composer was Klaus Badelt. And yeah, why, dude, if I were making movies, I'd be like, I need Badelt on the phone right now. What what do you mean he doesn't speak English? (laughs) Well, get me somebody that speaks what he speaks because I want to hire him to do that for my movie. What? He doesn't work? He's been replaced by Hans Zimmer? Well, that doesn't make any sense. (laughs) I don't know. The, The best superhero movie score of the past 20 years was Superman Returns. John Ottman doing it doesn't really John count because he was doing and it already. his own new and and you know what people can argue and people can say superman's return sucked till the day they die the music was awesome i don't care i loved superman returns and fuck you but <laughs> because people hate that movie even though it made more than batman begins because people hate that movie they're not going to do that in man of steel you're not going to hear those beautiful perfect timeless john williams themes because somebody somewhere some dipshit that i saw at a comic book store said that that was stupid and it was aping a movie from the 70s it was never that good to begin with and then when he got up off the ground he says and i stand by my statement that they'll go a different way and and that you know that's that's fine everybody can go a different way or whatever when joel schumacher took over the batman films they jettisoned those awesome Danny Elfman themes. And of course, you know, it's his prerogative being the new director and all that stuff. But oh man, the dipping quality isn't just because they got a hack director making those movies and the scripts were really, really bad. To lose those awesome Danny Elfman themes. The 89 Batman music was awesome. And they built on that for Batman Returns, mm-hmm. an even better score. Again, am I stupid because I think this way and nobody else thinks that way? Or is everybody else stupid because they're like, oh, we're doing a sequel to X-Men. Maybe we should get those themes that we used in X-Men. And, you know, every time the X-Men go into action, we use that music again. I, 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 sure would have been a good idea. Yeah, that's that's the sad thing. I have the X-Men soundtrack, but I, I never did bother to get any of the other X-Men movie soundtracks because they never had anything that I wanted to hear again. That's usually what I will do with a movie. If I watch a movie and I hear something that uh, that I like enough, 
I'll go and, and, and I'll download that soundtrack. And, and people will talk about the dynamic duo that did the music for Dark Knight and Batman Begins. That's passable music. It's, I like that little theme that comes in three hours into the movie. <laughs> but it, yeah, it's it, not what Elfman did. It's not anywhere near that quality. It's got. It, it's, it's got trying s- to do something different. I understand that. Yeah. But sorry, I I prefer what I prefer. Right. It's got something that you could remember if only they used it more often. They don't use well, it is enough. Is it music or is it just sounds? <laughs> you know what I mean? That that thing that they played in on the trailers, making us believe that that was the new Batman theme. You know what I mean? The can you do it? I can't. No, I don't the know. Da- well da- 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 Rising up back on the street. That was the new Batman theme? I didn't know that. Wasn't it something like that? (laughs) You know what I'm talking about, though, right? I mean, I know I blew it with with the Survivor song, but... (laughs) I'm not sure, I have to say. But but It goes... Dun, 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 dun. Kind of like that. That's exactly it. And, and it sounds very much like Eye of the Tiger. Thank you for vindicating me there. Yeah, and I understand they're probably not trying to go for traditional superhero, not with Christopher Nolan's mm-hmm. Batman music. But I remember that comes in when Batman is on the motorcycle and he's going to take the, or stop the Joker from taking that uh, down that truck uh-huh. that has Harvey Dent in it, ostensibly. And that music plays and it just, it gets your blood pumping or whatever. And I mean, that is the Dark Knight theme, the right. theme of the, the new Batman movies. And yeah, they do it a couple of times. Yeah, not enough. Uh, but it works when they do it because mm-hmm. it's, it's like I said, a shorthand and it's, it's, it's good music. It's something that you identify with that character. And right. I, I, I don't have a background in music. I, I'd like to sit down with somebody because, you know, they could tell me that I'm up in the night, which is old person's way of saying you're full of it. The, the John Williams way of doing it is, you know, for cartoons and, you know, adult movies don't need to have that kind of stuff. But it's just it's a shame that you and I didn't walk out of Captain America doing that theme. You yeah. Know. They, if you know, I remember when they finished the experiment and he is now Captain America, they pop open that thing that he's inside of that little submarine capsule thing uh-huh. and you get a bit of the theme and you know i just I, I wish i'd heard it more i'm sure eventually when i get it and and listen to it a few times i'll be able to uh sing it and you know chris evans is signed to six he's signed to a six picture deal. oh he is yes he is signed to do three captain america three avengers films so perhaps in the future we'll listen to this conversation and go what a bunch of dumbasses listen dude everybody knows that theme everybody's heard it a hundred times captain america theme is maybe it's just still to come well wouldn't it be great if in avengers when iron man walks on or when he finally puts on the armor the iron man theme plays and when hulk you know finally transforms you hear the music that you remember from the music. 2000s. <laughs> Did they not use that? Uh, yeah. I believe they used that in the 2008 movie. But sometime you and I need to watch that together. I haven't seen it since 2008. Do you have that one? I don't have it on DVD yet. Uh, I have the other one. Oh, f- you. Right up your patoot. I never did get the other one, uh, the newer one. You know, just every one of these characters, even though it's a bunch of different composers or whatever, wouldn't that yeah, be cool? Yeah, it would be cool. And, 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 it's an and int- I'll bet there's a, there's something from Thor that they played more than right. once. I'm sure there is. There's some kind of Thor theme. And, you know, it's an interesting dynamic, the Avengers thing, you know. And I think we were talking about that before, too. Is just it's, There's like Freddy versus Jason. Or Aliens vs. Predator, where they took separate franchises and made a sequel to both of them at the same time. But, God, I don't think there's ever been anything like The Avengers, where we've got Hulk, who is, there's been two movies of the Hulk. There's been two movies of Iron Man. There's been a movie of Thor, a movie of Captain America. Four different franchises are being melded into one, and... Six different movies being melded into one, you know, it's just an interesting thing, you know, something that's really never been done before, I don't think. And it, yeah, Except it's, for those it's, Barbie fairy topia ones, those were huge. That's right. You know, it's about time for me to start on a new Barbie. I told you what my idea for the next Barbie one was. 
I think you probably have, but it's been a while, so I don't remember. That'll be good stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if I may be so bold, sir. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's not uh, been done before as far as I know. It will be really cool to see if it works. Now, I, I trust Joss Whedon implicitly. Honestly, if, if he were signed on to do... I don't know. I, there's nothing I hold more sacred than these. He was Marvel signed characters. on to do Harry Potter nine. If if it he were signed good. on to do a remake of Vampire Strikes Back, there you go. You trust? I trust out good. him to do it. I know that that uh, that not everybody feels that way. I've heard lots of people be you know say like some they handed all these characters to just failed TV writer. You know, I guess that's that's one way of looking at it. But uh, there's an alternate reality somewhere where they're on the third Joss Whedon Wonder Woman movie already. And yeah. uh, Firefly just finished its seven season run. And, and, uh, and its spinoff series is in its third season. And the uh, movie trilogy is, they've, they've decided to extend it beyond the trilogy and they're going for the fourth chapter of that now. The trilogy? Yeah, the Big Damn trilogy. Oh. It's, it's, it's continued on beyond that. See, in this alternate reality, because there were seven seasons of Firefly, none of them survived to be in a big damn movie. <laughs> yeah, that probably would be the case. You died, Mr. Reynolds. Seemed like the thing to do. Uh, we probably should should wind up, although we don't have to. I really liked Captain America. There were parts that I loved, and I, I think that uh, of all of the four that we've seen this summer, it's the one that I'd most like to go see again. Yeah. Even though it's the one I saw the most recently. Yeah, I'd ha I think I would agree with you. Of, of the four superhero movies that came out this summer, the two on either end were my two favorites, Thor, Thor and, and Captain. Captain America. And I, it's hard to say because, you know, it's kind of unfair to Thor because it's been months since I saw it and I saw Captain America a week ago. Um but I feel like I probably liked Captain America even better than Thor, although I liked both of them a lot. Yeah, I would like to go see it again. Yeah, it's a shame that uh, our lives are so short. Because, <laughs> like, X-Men First Class and Thor are playing at a theater, geez, like three miles from my house. I could ride a bike to it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that I'll get out and see both of them. Right. <laughs> but as a 22-year-old, I would have seen them both in yeah, one day several you know? times oh those days are so long gone they are gone but now we have video on demand and now we have movies coming out on dvd 20 minutes after the end credits have finished rolling in the theater and, and plus you have children and you know they might pester you to see thor or whatever yeah that's a good thing i was thinking that you mentioned that they're at the dollar theater now i may well just take a my kids to see some of those now that it's cheap why the freak not well because it's far that's true and you work only sort of i mean i'm at work <laughs> i as well unless things have drastically changed since the last time i was there you work <laughs> Let, let's talk about cowboys and aliens next week okay how about we talk about it uh three days from now because that's how long we waited between seeing Captain America and seeing Cowboys and Aliens. Okay, that's fair. But since I have to edit the files, it's going to be a heck of a lot longer than three days that uh, poor people have to wait. Damn. Poor people. There's three people that listen to this, and you're not one of them. <laughs> that's right. I need you to go back and listen to the uh, Cars 2 Crappy Feet episode. Because <laughs> that was some of my best work. Oh, you really right. got to listen to that. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> thank you for listening. I'm Rich Outfield. And I'm Big Anklevich. Good night. Thank you for listening. That gets my goat. <laughs>